Mr. Chavez, how you doing, man? Hey, what's up, fellas? What's up, man? How you guys doing? Good, how are you? Hey, what's up, dude? How's it going? Good, good. Uh, thanks for taking taking this meeting. We really appreciate it, man. Oh, yeah, for sure. Pleasure. Yeah, to thanks for having me, man. A little out of <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll introduce myself. My name's Ruben. Uh, I think I played a game with you with the with the Lopez brothers. Uh, okay. You came out and worked out. I think we were at the Dodgers at the time. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a few years ago. You look familiar from then. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, we uh, played a couple games. I think you only pitched one game. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was cool, you know? Yeah. I'm Danny. They call me DH from the initials. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And we got uh, uh, I'm Boski. Uh, my my real name is Ralph, uh, but I just go by Boski. It's kind of a long story. Don't have to get into that. But uh, yeah, you, you call me Ralph or Boski, whatever you like. Gotcha. You're good. Yeah. We all got long stories for our nicknames. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, skinny. But, uh, I guess I'm really so it's all right. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So we uh, we really appreciate it, and uh, we're trying to get our pot off the ground, and we, we're trying to highlight local guys and things like that. And you're from our area, you know. We've nice. Me and uh, me and Ralph went to Eisenhower. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I know you went to A.B. Miller. My nemesis. Yeah. <laughs> Woo, Jack. Yeah. Eisenhower, no way. Yeah. I'm trying to find my. I want, I want to say that maybe my senior year uh, or your senior year is probably my sophomore year. I graduated in '03. Um, I remember you pitched against us. It was at, at Eisenhower. Um, and I don't. I want to say that the result of the game is that we came out on top, but my I, I could be wrong. I don't really remember. Yep. <laughs> but I do remember we were every the time for a little while. Yeah. Something. I mean, every the didn't pitch against. I didn't have my freshman. Right? Every time I faced him, I lost. <laughs> I think I forgot who was it. You guys had a little stud, little shortstop, I believe it was, who led off the, who was your leadoff hitter? Adrian Abraham. Might have been him. Uh, um, he played in the field, uh, shortstop. Uh, Puente, how no. maybe. I I could ask somebody, and he would know. But I remember my pitching coach goes, because he, I think I pissed him off at some point that week. He goes, if you don't throw this first pitch right over his head and it doesn't hit the backstop on a line, you're coming out of the game. Oh shit. Like, <laughs> I'm like, you gotta be kidding. Like what? Like, I'm like, you gotta be kidding. Like for real. So I'm literally running out to the mound, and I see another pitcher running down to the bullpen to warm up. I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> it had to be done. Yeah. Sure enough, that guy booked me twice. I was like, man. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, I, yeah. All right, go ahead. It was fun. Yeah. No, it was fun against Eisenhower. Uh, real quick, I know that you played at RCC. You played with my buddy Jose, Jose Ortega. Yep. So, yeah. 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 He's yeah. over at Rhythms right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I see him. I see him often. My sister I still go over there. My sister played softball at RCC. You probably know Kathy Urutia. She was with Jose for a while, way back then. Okay. And um, and so yeah, I guess that's kind of where I I kind of have like that six degrees of separation from you. Is gotcha. uh, a little bit of that. <laughs> yeah, I never played gotcha. against you or none of that. But anyway, I think I'm like the baseball version of Kevin Bacon. I've been around <laughs> on like what 13, 14 teams, some shit. Oh man! I mean, I think Edwin Jackson's got me on that one though. Oh yeah, by a couple teams, a couple yeah. more teams. <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit. I'm uh, chasing, I'm chasing them. The, the meeting, like uh, the interview, is going to go real light. Uh, it's real relaxed. Um, mm. We drink as we do stuff. I'm as relaxed as we roll. Cheers to that! Yeah, cheers to that! Right? Um, cheers, like, guys. It's going to be real light. Feel free to speak freely. Uh, I can guarantee we're not going to take anything you say out of content. You know, uh, no, I mean, I'm my 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 dialogue's pretty. I mean, I am upfront about things. I'm not. I'm honest. I mean, I think that's what kind of keeps me around the game a little bit, um, for my honesty. But to the fans, I'm as honest. Like, if you've seen my interviews, I'm as honest as can be. Like, there's, yeah, that's I mean, everything I every everything I say, I mean, like, and I it comes from the heart, regardless if it's something good or bad. Like, it doesn't matter what it is or. If it's something I think of a player or somebody I think of somebody that I came across, I'm going to say it like, I mean, how I would want it said about me. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's the best thing you can ask about as a character standpoint. And that's something that I've always, I always tell my guys. It's like, it's something that I can't take away from you. Your work and your character, man. That's something that, that's embedded in you, you know? So, I mean, that's how I run. I mean, so. Cool, man. Well, um, let's get into it a little bit. Like, what have you been doing in this free time? 
<laughs> rearranging a lot of things that I haven't <laughs> been able to during the summer. Um, well, I don't have as many cobwebs as I get back to up in my garage. Um, <laughs> but no, I'm just staying in shape. Um, right. Told the guys the other day, uh, we had a group, a bullpen text message, uh, Zoom meeting. Told the guys, I was like, you know what? I don't have a job next year. I'm going to be 37 this summer. Mm -hmm. I said, and I'm doing, if I'm doing spring training at my home once a week, you should be able to do the same thing and take it as seriously because you only got a certain amount of time. And this really kind of put it into perspective of it being taken away from you, the game in a way, mm -hmm. in a selfish way, it was taken away from us. Um, from our, you know, from, from the athlete temple and you know, it's like, well, nothing we can do about it. Like, but we're being selfish of wanting to get back out there and, and put smiles on faces that, you know, we, the text messages that we get. Yeah. So I've just been staying in shape as much as I can. I told the guys, don't take it for granted, man. I mean, it comes around once a lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. A, yeah. this virus, and B, this game and yeah. this opportunity that we get. So you got you to gotta run with it, man. I mean, there, there's nothing you can do that can, that can put you in a bad situation, yeah. so to speak. Are you still living in SoCal? Yeah. Yeah, we're out in Riverside. Oh sweet! Nice. Oh, that far. Yeah. oh yeah, you're down. You're yeah. right down the street. We're we're here in Rialto. Okay, nice. Right, like a block away from my town. So <laughs> okay, yeah, nice. can't get nice. away. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I'm over here by uh, we're over here by RCC. So uh, what kind of um, you know, what, what kind of things do you hear coming down the line? You know, from you know the negotiations with MLB and the players. Um, anything you can tell us that can kind of shed some light on the situation? Uh, we're looking like everybody's saying June fifteenth. We're trying to be at our respective places. All right. Um, whether it's in your home state stadium or it's in your spring training stadium is what I'm hearing. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's an option. Yeah. But it's kind of one of those things where you're caught in a catch twenty two where if everybody does go to you know, go to their goes to their respective spring training sites in Arizona and then they gotta go to Florida. Are you allowed to enter squad? or play against each other right. mm -hmm. um, because of the exposure. Do you we ever, don't know where they, we, we don't know where they came from. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Right. Do you ever get a chance to like, you know, throw some bullpens here and there? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been throwing three a week. Oh yeah. Oh, past, yeah. yeah. The last, last two weeks they've been going good. I mean, I had a setback in spring training with my shoulder a little bit mm -hmm. um, after my, after the one game that I threw. Mm -hmm. um, but after that, it was, I came, I, this, in a way, help a lot of guys that were hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, dude, you're, you're durable as fuck, though. Like, you'll come in and a relief. <laughs> you'll come in hard. Like, it doesn't matter yeah. if you do the game before. So it's like, it's mind boggling almost because a lot mm -hmm. of the dudes out there now playing the game, like, they're coming down with all sorts of arm trouble. And it's hard, yeah. it's hard to come across somebody who's been in the league as long as you have, who's mm -hmm. able to throw multiple innings and at the same time maybe start a game if necessary. So, um, like, have you had any, anything to deal with in your career arm wise that's kind of set you back or how do you, how do you overcome I mean, it? it gets back to like earlier, like you, it comes around once a lifetime. So I, I mean, I've taken a lot of family time away from my kids and my wife of, from having to prepare to be lo longevity, you know, have this longevity. I mean, ba going back to my freshman year of high school, that's when I first started my elbow problems. And that was when I was transitioning every year from football to baseball. Playing Pop Warner growing up, I would always throw football, baseball, being quarterback. And then I get to my freshman year, I'm like, man, my elbow is killing me. It turned out to be tennis elbow, nothing serious. So I found a way to pitch through it for the last, you know, nine, better parts of 20 years. And this past off season, I got my elbow cleaned up. Uh, I had a couple bone spurs removed, which led to just a sh little, basically shoulder fatigue in spring training mm -hmm. after my outing against the, after my spring outing against the Dodgers, right before we got shut down. Um, but the, the best part that, about that part of being hurt for the first time was I realized I was human. I did take it for granted. Like, but I didn't, if we were in the hunt, I wouldn't have got it done. Cause I still could have pitched. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just push through it. I mean that, yeah. Cause I've been doing it for so long. Like I would have found a way to get it done. Yeah. yeah. Um, sure. but I was like, you know what, at this time, it's kind of not about that anymore it's kind of about life i want yeah. to be able to play catch with my kids i want to be play, be able to pick up my kids without pain anymore like and now ever since then the kids i feel like i'm 24 again man yeah. 
Elbow wise, elbow and arm wise, yeah, I feel great, man. That's the biggest thing that I could have said that could have happened from this this pandemic. Yeah, it helped me recover hugely. I mean, hugely I can feel like yeah, the number of games that you guys played throughout the year, like you guys are due, you know, for some kind of break. Everybody, yeah, and everybody least, is. Every, everybody's going to come into some sort of ailment, whether it's an oblique, it's a hamstring, it's a it's a shoulder, elbow, whatever the case may be, but if if you get that break, you need to understand how to use that break yeah. and yeah. not just woe me or man, this is this and that. Like, no, you gotta, you gotta man up. Like, cause this is, this game could be taken away from you just like that as easy as you thought you had it. Mm-hmm. And it could come from as simple as that. And I had my, that shoulder thing in spring and I was like, dang, did I do enough or didn't I? Yeah. But I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to do it because I never gone through it. Cause yeah. I was always just, I always kept throwing. Yeah, that's what's up. So just to kind I of take a tightness on, on some pitches, and I was like, you know what? Sorry, we lost you for a second. You're good now. No, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. But just to kind of piggyback off of that a little bit, you know, as kind of your career progresses and as time kind of moves on, there's different things that players use nowadays that kind of help them perform better. Um, specifically, I'm talking about like technology and like, you know, how pitchers are using things like spin rate and spin efficiency and hitters are doing launch angle and um, yeah. exit velocity, all that kind of stuff. Like, do you use those advanced statistics to help you out at all right now? I actually had a conversation about this today for about probably better parts of an hour wow. with my guru. He's a pitching coach at, at uh, Redland, University of Redland. All right. And I've been going – we played together with Pittsburgh when we were in the minor league. Never got to the big leagues, unfortunately. I mean, this guy had the, one of the best controls I've ever seen mm-hmm. of all pitches, not just one or two. Like, he had four or five pitches that he could command. And the fifth pitch was the one depending on what he wanted to make dance a little bit more. But uh, it was impressive. So we've always had that, that, that connection of playing against each other and being able to have good location and then always talk pitching. It was never one-sided. It was always, all right, try this, do this. Do whatever it can make you comfortable. So I've always been going to him ever since he stopped playing and I kept playing. And he's one that I can attribute a lot of a lot of success to of recent. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, access to that information is key. I my biggest thing with that whole stuff is how do you that how do you get to that? You know, how does that guy swing at that pitch down and away? Or how does he always chase that fastball up and in? I want to know how that, what sets that up. That's my biggest argument is how does, it all comes from a computer. We all know that. Yeah. Everybody has algorithms. Every team has different ones. But how does that result come about? Mm-hmm. You know, what did you do to set that pitch up is my biggest question to it. So that's where I kind of butt heads a little bit with, with our guys a little bit. But it's just me being coming up from a time where you just watch video and look at hands yeah, yeah. Feet, and and having that feel for the game that you know it's so important yeah and it's all tendencies yeah. in in hindsight so if you know their tendencies and then you add that extra part of the analytics that they're bringing on i mean you can you can put up zeros for days yeah. right. as a pitcher I mean, you know, I think with those slow-mo cameras that they have, it's like you can you can kind of really zone in on where your release point is. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the the direction the ball is spinning and kind of how mm-hmm. to do that just based on those slow-mo cameras. I mean, I don't know. Mm-hmm. If, I mean, I don't know if you have been doing that on a regular basis, but I've seen like some of the guys out there that put it out there on their social media, like Trevor Bauer does it all the time. But yeah. I don't know. Do you, do you use those slow-mo cameras also like with your buddy? They haven't been spring training. No, I I mean, we use um, Rapsodo. All right. Um, and for me, it's just – I just like to see the horizontal stuff. There you go. My, I want all my stuff to look 12-6. Gotcha. Um, but that that and – I don't know. I just – I kind of do look at the spin a little bit just because I've been given numbers in the past. So it's kind of – I have numbers in my head of yeah. what those are. Right. But I really don't – I really don't pay attention to it because like as old school as I am, I look back of how I got to that result. What did I do to set them up? And getting back to that, that part is, are these based on my numbers against that person? 
or are these just a general accumulation of everybody else? Yeah, an average. That's what I want to know. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm not that guy anymore that throws 95, but he can hit a fastball up and in. Yeah. A four seam. Well, I don't get that part. Well, if I throw a fastball up and in and he hits a homer, I'm the one getting sent down that day, and I got to answer questions. Yeah. Yep. Not the guy that handed me the paper that said this is the right one. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of a thing that has to get looked at a little bit more is at what point is do we have enough at bats against that person to warrant us having our own thing? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. that's where I that's where I have a big problem with the analytical part is when do I have enough at bats and when am I established enough in the big leagues to have my own algorithm so to speak of what they're all coming up with you know, you know what you want to do and execute it the way you want to do it mm-hmm. well, yeah and it's a chess match it basically yeah. is like nobody nobody made bobby fisher change nope. yeah. nobody <laughs> changed the game because of him yeah like yeah. that's so that's kind of how i look at it like you just it's a game of adjustment yeah i mean the hitters are making their adjustments as well so you know if if they know that you're going to come up and in on them they're they're going to make that adjustment to look for it up and in yeah i mean i love pd with the Dodgers, by a, in 17, that World Series, nobody wanted to chase that high heater. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. he wasn't establishing down. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you look at 18, he was the best guy in the, in the, in the bullpen. Oh, man, he turned it and around. Down. He turned around. All because, he, all because he started down. pitching. Once he got he that pitching. He wanted it, oh, dude, he was dominant. He knew how to pitch. That, and that was all stuff he had. Yeah. He had all that stuff. So aside kind of from like that, like technical analytic stuff, what about the baseballs themselves? I mean, is supposedly that they're different. I don't know. How do they feel to you? They're a little bit different. Yeah. They're a little bit different. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, I'll go up into my case from 2009 mm-hmm. and from a, a ball that I had somebody sign and I'm like, man, this is, this is way different than what it is now. Yeah. Yeah. It, and then, Last year, I think me and me and uh, one of our pitchers, we cut two balls apart, one from like 14 and one from this season. And they were a little bit different ah. from the strings and stuff like that on the inside. Interesting. But then again, guys are bigger, guys are stronger. Everybody's work ethic is different nowadays. Yeah, yeah. You know, everything's more powerful, more exertion. Ah. So mm-hmm. if you have a, a quick exertion from side to side and you're – realm of you know i don't know what it's called their your physical capability of rotation like surface area like you're gonna win the battle if you're strong in that stronger than the next that guy yeah exactly and it's always gonna go further so i mean i really can't say it's kind of the baseballs or this and that i mean who knows yeah Yeah. at this point the wood the wood the trees like the bats like we don't know what nobody (laughs) brings up the bats like i Simple. I remember it was a big transition when people started going to Maple. That was a completely different thing, you know. And, mm-hmm. and yeah, it's a harder wood and more solid, and the, the ball bounces off better. And now it's like, yeah, yeah. nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about that at all. No. So that, that's kind of something that I kind of want to like. Why isn't like talk about the bats? Yeah, push the. What has changed in the bats? Yeah. Like why are they, why are they breaking more? you know, on, on balls that you're really not hitting that far off of the end. Yeah. Like you're missing it off the end that much, but the sweet spot's that much further. Like what, yeah. where are we hung up here? Like, I don't, I'm, I don't get it. Some of inches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So um, some of the other differences though, coming up in the game are like, you know, uh, pitch clock, supposedly three batter minimum now um, to replace your pitchers. I know that, you know, that three batter minimum kind of not really affects you directly, maybe indirectly, I don't know, but we just kind of want to get your opinion on that, too. I get it. Don't be a rain rain delay. Mm. Um, We still got – we still want to go home at some point throughout the night. You know what I mean? Right. (laughs) Um, Just, like, you're really that uncomfortable. It's going to take you 45 seconds to throw a pitch. And then the second thing is I don't think the mound visit thing is right. No, because from the three batter minimum, it, it shouldn't like that should shouldn't be a thing. But you should be able to get both sides of the plate out if you're in the big league. Yeah, for sure. My, my honest opinion. I do both. Um, because there's going to be a guy that can't go that night. 
yeah. yeah. He's used to throwing in that situation. Like, I need you. I'm going to have to need you to pick me up there. Um, but the mound visit thing, I don't think it's right because that means a lot at the end of a ball game when you're in the eighth and ninth inning, even at the latter parts of the seventh, yeah. on the road especially. Because they got two more at-bats. You're at home if you got the lead. That's different. Yeah. But on the road, in crunch time, playoffs, you mean to tell me a guy that never played the game is going to tell me how many times I can go to the mound and talk about a situation here? Yeah. yeah. Has no idea <laughs> who's never been in that situation to begin with? Exactly. I really don't think that's that's right. Yep. To, I mean, to, dig, to put that in somebody's hands that has never felt that adrenaline rush. Yeah, they changed it like that. Like, it was just a quick yeah. change. Yeah, yeah. You, you, that's, you can't do that. Yeah, yeah. That changes and the whole doing thing. a disrespect to everybody mm-hmm. because it could be – it could mean something to that next person. Yeah. Yeah. And it takes away Down from the, the, of the game for sure. Absolutely. Oh, I can't go out and visit you. We're doing all these hand signals like we're in college football now and nobody means anything, but we're supposed to be looking down the end of the dugout. Like, where are we – I I just don't get it. It baffles me so much. I mean, but um, how – like, how antsy are you to get back out on the field, though? Like, I mean, for you personally, like, are you kind of ready to get back out and play some ball? Or are you kind of taking more of a cautious approach, like some of the other guys that are being a little more vocal about it? No, I'm, I mean – those guys are the leaders. I got to follow them. Um, yeah. But for me, I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm, cause I feel healthy. I'm, I still want to play plain and simple. I don't have a contract after this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the game. Uh, my family sees that I still love it. That's yeah. the biggest thing. They see that I still love it. They don't want me home. <laughs> so I, <laughs> they're like, go, go they're away. like, oh, Please dad's go. home, man. All right, time to get in shape. But no, I don't. I don't want to be. I don't like being home. I don't like it. As so as weird. I love being home, but I don't like being home. Yeah. Because my I'm prepared to be home at a certain time, and that's from, you know, November to to January first week of February. Is it a big deal to play without fans? It it is because those they see you you do get an extra extra tick of adrenaline. You'll yeah. gain a couple miles an hour on that fastball. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, for sure, you'll you'll gain a couple couple um, <laughs> pounds of torque on that on that rotation as a hitter. Whatever it takes to get that roar, yeah. and then it forces it. But, I would, it kind of forces you to uh, focus more on you know that tunnel vision that that it, you know it's kind of required. You got to get the job to, done. To, yeah. To perform that at yeah. And secondly, it's you should do it. You should be fired up anyways. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's difference of going like from there to there, but it's it's that big difference. You know what I mean? It, it, that little bit is so much yeah. to the game that is really going to be missed if we do play. Yeah, it's going to feel like a bunch of Sunday league games. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right, we're used to that. But still fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, still fun. That's why we're out there. Yeah, and it's hard it's to focus. So quiet out there. I mean. Sometimes you're chatting it, chatting it up with your with your outfielder, some you know, just chopping it up, talking shit, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I've, I've played I played center field in one, and it was just because I woke up one day and my body was like, I was just like, all right, this is, I can't, I like couldn't move, yeah. so like I got to go move. So I went and played center field one day, and I was like, man, this was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this was backyard again. Yeah, yeah you know, that's then, exactly what it's like. That's exactly what it's like. Exactly, and that's and even when I went out to pitch to get ready for the season, um, it was I still had to compete. You still got to turn it on, yeah. no matter where you're at. No matter where you're at, even today when I had my little target practice, it was still like the best effort I've had all off season. All all this second half yeah. of the off season, I I should call it, um, effort wise just because I knew it was about that time because we're, we may be moving forward. Yep. Yeah. Um, I w- we want to move into some questions that we call quick, pick, quick pitch questions. <laughs> but before we do that, I have a question that I want to ask you. I know you played for, is it nine major league baseball teams right now? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> we can, I could go through the jerseys real quick. Right here, yeah. I counted nine. Um, and then you said Edwin. Edwin's a couple got- teams twice. 
a couple teams twice. Right. Yeah. yeah Texas yeah. twice, right? They're full circle right now. Texas twice. Uh, Toronto. The Blue Jays twice. Um, yeah. Edwin, Edwin uh, Jackson's got you by, I think, six teams. I think he's played for four yeah. teams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but with that in mind, uh, I'm a Mariners fan. Has Seattle ever offered you a contract? Not that I can recall. I mean, maybe when I was a free agent before I signed with the maybe before I signed with the Angels because that yeah. was the first time I was a free agent. Okay. Right. Um. But no, huh? probably not. Not that not that I know of. Um. One thing I was gonna ask you too is like growing up in Southern California, did you have any like team that you followed? Was it the Angels, Dodgers, or somebody else? Pedro. Pedro. Oh. As soon as <laughs> yep. As soon as he was declared not durable, I was like, my guy. Mm. I knew I wasn't getting bigger as a kid. <laughs> um, and everything I did modeling him, modeled after him th- growing up from yeah. Little League, Pony Ball, up through high school, even through college. I mean, everything I modeled. The leg kick, I did everything. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, I saw you pitch a couple <laughs> games at RCC, and I could see like the, you know the movement that you had, the just the change of speed, everything you had it going on. And I you mentioned oh, that Martinez. Yeah, I could see that. So like I really couldn't go for the Dodgers, and <laughs> I, mean, I would have got shot by my family if I wouldn't drink the Angels. <laughs> <laughs> I had oh, my, my sisters giving me shit all the time because you know I've, uh, growing up, I my dad was a Dodgers fan, so you know naturally I was going to watch the Dodgers. But, you know, I ended up a Red Sox fan, so I completely understand. Gotcha. See, me too. Like, I ended up really becoming a Red Sox fan. I, like, I really oh, did become one. <laughs> like, it was just because of him. Like, just yeah. that's – I mean, yeah, Montreal did give him that extended extended chance. He did flourish there. But when he got to Boston, it was, you saw the game just elevate. Oh, yeah. And that, that's where the fans come into play, man. It's ridiculous. You look at the All-Star game, you're like, oh, my God. What did he do in those two innings? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Like, I'm like, what the f- are you doing here? <laughs> this guy's 180 pounds, and he's just mowing through these 240-pound behemoths. Yeah. <laughs> with 98, just here, hit it. Yeah. Nope. Not going to. No. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 was, he was going – I think he went through McGuire, Sosa um, – I think he was pitching. Was it wa- Walker? Walker. Walker, yeah. yeah. M- uh, Larkin? Yeah. Yeah, Larkin. There's somebody else. One more guy. Uh, five out, five out, out of six struck out. Yeah, right? five yeah. out of six struck out, but yeah. uh, they, they threw out Matt Williams at second base. He was trying to steal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah. Why? Well, <laughs> because they didn't, they didn't want to see him strike out six. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Scapegoat. Yeah, right. So, right. so how is it pitching in Boston? Amazing. It's one of my favorites. Okay. One of my favorites, yeah. There, Chicago, Pittsburgh, obviously, because first first game. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, um, and then the backdrop in Pittsburgh. Yeah, PNC is unreal. Mm-hmm. And you get, you know, being able to pitch at at Dodger Stadium, and then for the Angels. I mean, there's there's about a handful of team of stadiums that mean a lot to me. Yeah. You know, Angels for my grandfather, Dodgers because my family rooted for them. Yeah. You know. Wrigley because it's Wrigley, the Cubs. Boston because it's Boston. And then Pittsburgh because it's Pittsburgh. That's my first team that I came up. And you got Texas, who took a chance on me, you know, to give me a chance to put my foot in the game. About yeah. 16, six stadiums that are that mean a lot to me. Yeah. As far as personally. Yeah. Or pick just one. So are you excited to play in a new stadium? Yeah, because that bullpen's hot, Jack. Oof. No, <laughs> Man. Really? Have, you, have you been down there to like yeah. see it, like during the off season? I saw it when it was under I saw it when it was under construction when I had to go down for fan fest. But other than that, I haven't seen it since. Other than the pictures and videos that they put up. Okay. Yeah, that's gonna be nice. <laughs> yeah. It looks really yeah. Cool. yeah. Bullpen's uh, still far as hell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they gotta uh, implement the golf cart. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. you can't. Right put a, nope. Golf cart. No zeros in golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give it ass twice. <laughs> no uh, zeros in golf cart. Do you have a favorite city to visit? We've always liked Chicago. Um, for me, the family—they—they've just loved going there, walking up and down Mill, uh, you know, 
that fashion mile, whatever it's called over there. Um, so I, I Chicago is probably one of my favorite to, for them to play as far as my family going to. Yeah. All right. Um, one of our questions for the quick pick, quick pitch question yeah. is uh, favorite player growing up. Safe to assume it was probably Pedro. Yeah. Oh, for sure. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one player that you think you've had the worst success against and the player you think you've dominated. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I dominated anybody. Is there a I don't think I got. You see, like, oh, I don't I, think I got. I don't think I got. I th- it took me about five years to throw my first scoreless inning against the Brewers. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, it took me about eight years to get Braun out. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's no real I, I think, guy over oh, there. Okay. Yeah, he hates that guy. <laughs> um, so I got those two guys. Uh, him. He's probably my nemesis, I would say, going back to when I first came up. Yeah. And then me and Trouty, it's a fun – that's my favorite matchup, me and Trout. It's it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's great. It's fun. It's always a chess match. Yeah, you always want to sure. go up against the best, for oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, you were a teammate, yeah. too. I'm sure he's a great teammate as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, unreal. Unreal. One of my favorites. Yeah? Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, uh, he's a class act, for sure. So, oh, yeah. Most, uh, which team do you think you felt most at home with? Let's see. I'd probably say Oakland. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Any reason for that? Could it be the As, team? There's a reason why I didn't say the stadium. Okay. <laughs> it, felt, it felt like home. Yeah. Okay. They treated me like home. Okay. All right. So, like, I can't really say the stadium is one of my favorites to go to <laughs> because it's like home. That's where I recreated myself again in okay. in 13. And it was one that I'll never, like, not hold dear to me because it, I get a lot of love there. I mean, hey. shit, they played my walkout song as a visiting player. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's awesome. so, what is your walkout song? When I, that, when I was in Oakland, it was Lean Like a Trollo, but. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Love it. Love it. <laughs> and I was with Anaheim the next year. And, you know, so. It was it was pretty endur- it was pretty pretty heartwarming to hear that, and that's why I didn't say they're my it's my favorite stadium. Like that that team was probably the best one. Yeah. As I feel most comfortable with. Nice. So um, our last question is going to be also kind of referring to that yeah. you know team of 2013. We want to know what is it like being teammates with Big Sexy himself, Bartolo, Mr. Bartolo Colon. Oof. <laughs> Unreal. I mean, I've learned. I learned a lot. I mean, my two seamer, I learned a lot from him moving yeah. forward after we were together in Texas. Just talking to him about it, watching how he did it, what he did to make it good, what he did to make it better, or how what he did to make it consistent. Yeah. Um, just watching him, he's about as flexible as all can be. You would, you nobody would understand oh, it. I, like I, uh, on um, Instagram today, I saw him doing the splits. <laughs> you see that? Yeah, <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah oh yeah he's he's pretty flexible um but just watching his work ethic and his endurance and the way he went about his business that was one thing that that really stood out to me and then learning my two-seamer from him I mean I could attribute that to him regardless yeah. I mean I, I'll preach it till day's end nice. what he taught me we just bought his book yeah we have a book oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know how it is yeah we just I don't know how it is <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, uh, just to kind of cap that off, um, Boski did some research, and he noticed that you were teammates with him in 2013. Uh, thir- 13 and 18. And uh, and so that was the year. Yeah, in 18 in, in Texas, right? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, both years, uh, my, my guys won the World Series. So That's if awesome. you guys get back together, it's got to be with Boski. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the, trend, the trend is perfect. I love it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's got to happen with Boston. So, um, <laughs> anyway, man, that's uh, that's all we got for you. We we really want to thank you for joining us uh, on this podcast. Yeah, thanks um, for having me. Yeah, man, for sure, for sure. We do appreciate it. Uh, we wish you the best of luck this year and going forward. We hope you dominate. Get yourself an every contact okay. like Bryce Harper. <laughs> 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 but at least I'll say the right team though. 
do it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. Whatever it takes to get you to, you know, to keep going and to keep moving. We appreciate you. Yeah. We wish you the best. So Yeah, man. Appreciate it's a privilege it. and an honor to have you on. Yeah, sure. you're, you're, you're our guest. Our guest. Our yeah, first professional guest. So, and we wanted to get a look. Nice. So, uh, we, nice. we really appreciate it. But uh, we do have no one problem. question. One last question that we're going to ask oh, yes. everybody. One, right. one last question. Yeah, and it's, uh, what's your favorite baseball movie quote? Dude, I, oof. <laughs> Take any work here. Roots hitting your heart. <laughs> I, dude, I, in all honesty, I mean, Sandlot's great in Major League. I, <laughs> I think I know it. It's got to be, it's got to be one of them about Dorn. Yeah, <laughs> Major League. It has to be. Whatever. Or he um, or when uh, he wakes up in Mexico where he's hung over in bed. Oh yeah. <laughs> that little that little skit right there. Oh yeah. That's probably one of those. <laughs> from the are you from the Yankees or whatever? Yeah, like if yeah. you're gonna say you're, you're from the Yankees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Speaking, speaking of Mexico, I did see. Um, I'm not sure how accurate this is, but I saw that uh, uh you were affiliated with. Uh, Tomateros de Culiacán. Yeah. For certain. I played with, played with them in the off season of eleven. Okay. Yeah, I was curious about that because I kind of saw. Uh, well, I was doing a little bit of research. They, they just yeah. jumped out at me. So you know, because my my wife oh. is. Uh, yeah, she's from. Uh, her family's from Sinaloa, and they're uh, Venados. Okay. The Venados. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you know, like I, I'm pretty sure they're the uh, Cross City rivals. So. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah, it was so fun, man. Out, I mean, it was a blast down there. Oh yeah, the, the the baseball out there, the fans are out of control. <laughs> oh, dude, it was unreal. Yeah, and we didn't have the new stadium that they have now. Uh, we drove past it in Mazatlan, the one in Mazatlan. Um, I don't know about the one in Culiacan, but the one in Mazatlan, it, it's almost brand new. It's it's beautiful. I mean, we only saw it from the outside. Really? Yeah. I'd like to go back before I'm done playing. That's for sure to play winter ball. That'd yeah. be great. Hell yeah, man. Well, uh, thanks again, man, for joining us. Uh, we wish you all the best. Yep. Um, Appreciate it. Hey, next time, bring your umpire fees. Bring your umpire fees. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, Thank you. Hey, thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Cheers, boys. Yeah. All right, bro. Okay.